So there are a couple laws of thermodynamics that we need to apply to entropy. One is the second law of thermodynamics. It says that all thermodynamically favored changes increase the entropy, which basically means that the entropy of the system tends to increase. So that tells us that a positive delta S, an increase in delta S, is going to be favored. We can calculate delta S using an equation very, very similar to Hess's law. For any reaction, the delta S for that reaction is equal to the delta S of the products minus delta S of the reactants. This is exactly like Hess's law for delta H's, except if you replace them with S's. When S is positive, then that's telling us that the disorder has increased. This is a favored situation. When S is negative, disorder has decreased. This is unfavorable. One thing that I didn't write, but you may want to, is that when delta S is, at, is zero, when there's no change in um, delta S, that tells us that the system is at equilibrium. Let's look at the units, which are usually in joules per mole Kelvin, not kilojoules. Delta H's are usually in kilojoules, but delta S's are usually in just joules both of them per mole, but delta um, S also has that temperature component to its unit per mole Kelvin. The third law of thermodynamics may not seem super important, but it turns out to be, it tells us that the entropy of a pure, perfect crystalline substance at zero Kelvins is zero. This is important because this never happens. We never have a situation where we are at zero Kelvins. So how is this useful if it's telling us about something that never happens? It's useful because that tells us that in the natural world, which includes our labs, the enthalpy of any substance must be greater than zero. It's not zero. So you might remember that um, sometimes the heats of formation were zero. So sometimes an H value, an enthalpy value, could be zero. But that's not true for um, en entropy values. Entropy values are always greater than zero. Let's look at some examples and apply these rules. Example is asking us to use the standard entropies to calculate the standard entropy change for this process. So we're going to use that equation that we just looked at where the delta S of the process or the reaction is equal to the sum of S's for the products minus the sum of S for the reactants. In this example, we only have one reactant and one product, so that makes our calculations pretty easy. We're only looking at the S, the entropy values. We're not looking at the H or enthalpy values because we weren't asked about it. So our product is water liquid, that's 70, minus the value for water gas, that's 188.8. So we get an enthalpy change of 118, sorry, 118.8 joules per mole K. Again, notice that here we've got joules, here we've got kilojoules. So be careful that you're paying attention to your units. Those become important, especially when we start putting those two things together to think about whether overall the system is favorable or unfavorable. I'm sorry, I meant, the, I meant the process, whether the process is favorable or unfavorable. Okay, so we can do the same thing for each of these processes. We've got tables of um, standard enthalpies. We've got tables of standard entropies and we can use them just like we did above. So for this first one, our change in entropy is gonna be equal to two times the entropy of water minus two times hydrogen 
plus O2. Now remember when we had delta H's, these two would have been zero, the hydrogen and the oxygen, but that's not true for entropies. That's only true for enthalpies. So I just need to look these up on the table. Water, liquid, minus two times hydrogen, plus oxygen, gives me So I get a negative delta S. And that makes sense because I'm going from gases to liquid, right? So I should decrease my disorder. Here we've got delta S is equal to PBCL2 and H2 minus two hydrochloric acids and lead. Again, if we had a delta H, that would be zero, but this is a delta S. So it, we're gonna have to look it up on the table right there and plug in those values. And that will not be zero this time. So again, we get a negative delta S. That makes sense because here we're going from two moles of gas to just one mole of gas. So that does seem like a decrease in, dis, um, in disorder or decrease in dispersal. And then finally, our last delta S is gonna be equal to the S of copper plus zinc sulfate minus zinc plus copper sulfate. So we'll use the table, look up those values. And we get a negative 7.2 joules per mole Kelvin. It's a little bit harder to predict what it's gonna be because these are all solids. So we're just gonna to have to trust our math there to, um, to help guide us. It's not a huge change, which makes sense because we're solids and we're saying solids. So we wouldn't expect a huge change, whether it's positive or negative. It's harder to predict here since we don't have any phase changes or changes in the numbers of moles.